Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the second part of this video tutorial where we create a rig for this cute little toy dinosaur. In the previous tutorial, we added joints to our little dinosaur and made sure everything was parented and labeled correctly. In this video tutorial, we are going to go over the controllers and how to make this little guy come to life. If you're new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. Video tutorials include Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started on completing this little toy dinosaur. All right, next is going to be spines. So let's grab these guys. Again, make sure they're bigger than the body. I'm going to actually make this one slightly bigger still. This is going to be slightly bigger than the body. Uh, you want to snap it into the spine. So this is going to be uh, right click control vertex. Let's select that and I'm going to just nudge it forward and scale it. Again, the point of that is so you can A, see it and B, we can still select it and the, and the pivot point is right there. I'm going to duplicate that one, lift. Make sure it's centered around the next spine. And we also want one for the bottom. So let's go ahead and duplicate this one and bring it down. So this is going to be our spine one control. This one's spine three control. And this one's going to be spine two control. All right, I'm going to click on this one, shift select that one, click the letter P, then select this one, shift select that one, click on the letter P, then select this one, shift select that one, control P. And then finally, um, we'll just leave it at that. So whatever happens to the root control, everything else moves. All right, let's do the arms next. Let's create a circle. Again, I'm making this really, really simple. So just uh, just be aware. Let's right click control vertex. Again, let's grab some vertices and I'm having a hard time seeing. So I'm going to go into wireframe and oops, missed one. I'm going to just kind of move it around and place it where I can find it easily. All right, so keep an eye on the pivot point. It should be right at where the joint is. So again, control vertex, and then I'm going to make sure that this wraps around the arm. Now it is a little bit more oval shaped, so I am going to make it into an oval and then slightly rotate it. And let's see what that looks like. Maybe it's a little big. Let's scale it down a little bit. All right, cute. Okay, this is the left arm control. Let's see, left arm control. All right, I'm going to duplicate it. I am going to freeze its transformations and then flip it on the negative Y, I think. Nope. Negative one on the X. Yep. Going to snap it to here to this joint and again I'm going to rotate it until it fits. Okay. And let's actually grab all the controls and we are going to freeze the transformations. And let's also make sure we delete the history but we're not centering the pivot. So now everything is zeroed out. Let me just double check. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and make another circle lots of circles and we're going to make this one pretty large because it's going to be the head. So I'm going to take a look at it, this view, make sure it's placed. Well, actually I need to move it to the pivot point. So let me move that here and double check to make sure it's correct, which it is. So let's go to control vertices and lift. And this is where you can have a little bit of, you know, fun. So it's up to you how you want to shape it. You can try to make it a little bit more like the dinosaur, make it look more like a head if you want. So this is where your creativity and your limited amount of control vertices and see what you can come up with. All right. I like that. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and again, make sure we delete the history, freeze the transformations and there we go. Okay. The tail. The tail is going to, again, require circles. So let's go ahead and grab some circles. Let's scale it up. We're going to rotate it. And I'm going to probably maybe, probably leave them at regular circles just because I want it to be really easy for animators to grab it. So 
That looks good. I'm going to duplicate another one. Actually, let me just call this tail one control. Let me duplicate it. I'm going to snap it. V middle mouse and snap. Slightly rotate it. Scale it down a little bit. This is going to be tail control two. Duplicate this one. Snap it again. Rotate slightly. And this is going to be number three. All right, that looks good. Maybe slightly smaller. Let's select all these controls. I'm going to, let's see, control vertex this one and just lift a little bit. All right, let's make sure we select everything and we delete the history, free to transformation, do not center the pivot. Okay. So the next part is going to be to control these. So um, let's see, this one belongs to this one. So we'll parent that one, click on the letter P, select that one, grab this one and click on the letter P. Select this one, grab spine one, click on the letter P. A little worried about the this joint in the center, debating about it. We can always add more. Uh, all right, so next is my spine. Oops, somehow they moved, which is interesting. Let me, didn't even notice until now. So I guess I'll just scale it again. That's interesting. That was number, this is number three. I mean, it's an easy fix, but that was strange. All right, three, two, one. All right. Oh, and let's not forget the feet. Let's put one here and let's make it smaller. Left leg control, gonna duplicate it. Move it over here. This is going to be the right leg control. And let's see what this one, oh, this is the head control. Start parenting. This should be moving along with this one. So I'm gonna press P. I'm gonna grab the hands and select this one, which is another P. Then select this one, click on that one, and click on the letter P. The legs are going to be following the root. So make sure you select a root. P, select the other foot. P and let's not forget to delete the history and all that stuff here. All right, I think I did it all. Just kind of going through it really fast. Okay. Um, all right, so all of my controls are connected except for Dino main control and all of my joints are connected. So what that means now is that now I can start what's called parenting, um, but instead of parenting I'm going to use constraints. So this is found under rigging. So let's go to rigging here at the top left. And the first one I'm going to parent constraint is you want to select the parent, then the child by activating this. Then I'm going to go to uh, constraint parent options. And you just want to make, su make sure maintain offset is on and then uh, activate it. So what happens is that wherever I grab the root control, the root control follows, which is what we want. So next is going to be, and basically we're going to do that for all of them. So this one is the spine. So let me open this up. Um, I'm going to grab spine and I believe this is spine one. Yep. So what I'm going to do is select the controller, then select spine one, and we're going to do the same constraint parent. So whatever happens to this one, it moves to join. Now I know the legs are moving. We're going to take care of that in a second. Um, I'm going to click on the letter G because that was my last command. So again, I'm going to select number spine number two, uh, the controller, then the spine, click G. All right. So these little, it looks like chains. Those things are actually constraints. And I grab spine three, uh, control, select the spine three joint, click G. So again, if I grab this one, it will move. 
I grab this one, it will move that one, so on and so forth. Let's grab the arm control or the head control, then select the head joint and click G. Um, we're going to select the arm and the, uh, the corresponding arm joint, G. Again, the control, then the joint, G. Right, so whatever happens to this one, he moves. Uh, the tail is going to be the same thing. Select the controller, then the tail, G. Select this one, this one, G. Select this one, this one, G. All right. So theoretically, all of them are now connected to this, which they are. And then this one corresponds with that one, that one, this one, and so on and so forth. Okay, cool. Uh, that one works. This one works. Great. Don't forget to save. Let's do the legs. I'm going to be using IK. So um, it's going to be a very simple IK. Go to skeleton, create IK handle options, and we're going to do a simple chain. Let's go ahead and click on this, then click on the bottom one. And when I select this root control, there we go. It gets stuck. Now you'll notice that these actually should not be parented. So let me unparent these can shift P because they're going to be, because they shouldn't move when these legs move. So now if I do this, you'll notice that the foot kind of stays where it is until I move this. So let's go ahead and grab the IK handle shift, select this one, like other way around, grab the controller, select the IK handle constraint parent. Let's do the same thing again. Skeleton IK handle, click on here, click on here, and then we're going to grab the handle. Uh, the controller, then select the IK handle, uh, constraint, parent. Uh, let's label this. This is going to be my left leg IK handle because it's going to be confusing if I don't label. And this one's going to be my right leg IK handle. And there we go. So now if I move, if I grab the controllers, there you go. It moves the IK handles. And when I grab this, you'll notice that they kind of basically stick where they are. Uh, there's no extra joint for it to bend, so, you know, they're limited to the motion, but at least now I'll be able to just kind of wiggle it around. All right, so the moment we've been waiting for, let's go ahead and bind this. Let's select our root control. I'm going to go to the mail script editor down here at the bottom. I'm going to type in select minus sign HI, so select hierarchy, which means that it's going to select all of the hierarchy. Shift select your geometry. And I mean all your geometry. So I'm going to go over here and select all of the ge whoops, select all of the geometry. Do, 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 do. Then I'm going to go to skin, bind skin, go to the options. Uh, that looks good. Apply. So rainbow means that your joints are now binded. And if I grab my little skeleton, I can start moving around. Now there's obviously painted weight issues. But in general, things are moving around. Lots of painted weight issues. <laughs> but it's working. So he can move around. I can bring him around. There you go. His little feet are going to move. And so on and so forth. All right. We just completed the controllers and also constrained them. And we also binded the skin. So we are ready to start painting weights. And that is a whole separate tutorial. So in the next video tutorial, we're going to paint weights and basically get this ready for animation. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. If you guys find this helpful and you feel like a friend might actually like to rig, uh, rig their own little toy dinosaur with a simple rig, then please share my videos because that would be amazing. If my videos can help artists like you, that would be incredible. Also, please like and subscribe. That is a message from you to me, letting me know that you like these videos and that you want to see more. Also, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free ebooks, free downloads, and so much more. And you can also find some e-courses. So my e-courses are a deep dive into modeling, texturing, and so much more. So take a look at my e-courses. Again, thank you so much for watching and taking the time to be with me as we explore and create this really cute dinosaur and its rig so we can bring the little dino to life. As always, keep creating and I will see you next time.